metal and glass to make its products. And while we're on the subject of things that have pretty much stayed the same, it uses all the same buttons and perhaps the most underrated of these is the mute switch. It's one of the most useful buttons on the iPhone. It's almost baffling that other smartphones don't have one, but I find it incredibly useful and still in exactly the same place that it has been for the last seven years, on the left hand edge just above the volume buttons. And while the button materials have changed from being plastic on the original iPhone to the metal buttons on the iPhone 6 Plus, it's still the same makeup of buttons. You've still got the power button, the home button, you've still got the mute switch and the volume buttons, except they've all kind of changed places. And I can't tell you how happy I am to see the return of rounded edges. After a four year flirtation with the straight, cold and hard edges of the iPhone 4, 4S, 5 and 5S, Apple's finally returned to the thing that makes the most sense. Rounded edges are just more comfortable in hand, and I'm delighted to see them return. Apart from the metal and glass, obviously plastic is a common material between the original iPhone and the iPhone 6 Plus as well. And they both use the plastic for exactly the same purpose, ensuring that you can get a cellular signal and use your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Basically making sure that all the radios in the phone work properly, because metal, as nice as it is, and as much as Apple would love to have it all just completely seamless on the back, it wouldn't work. You need the plastic to break it up. On the original iPhone, they used this big plastic chunk on the bottom edge to act as sort of a radio window. On the iPhone 6 Plus and some of the previous iPhones, they just used the plastic banding between the metal bits to sort of divide the different radios up and to make sure that you can get a signal. Of course, there's no denying that the iPhone 6 Plus is much taller and much wider than the original iPhone. And that's mostly because of its larger display. And perhaps the screen is the area where you'll see the biggest difference between the first generation model and the current generation model. The screen is 57% larger, two and a half times sharper, which means it has 1.9 9 million more pixels on the display. Of course, the 6 Plus also uses some really fancy dual banded pixel technology, really thin backlights and makeup, and a much more accurate IPS display that you can see from more angles than you could the original iPhone. And the gulf in specifications between these two models is astronomical. The original iPhone had a maximum capacity or storage capacity of 16 gigabytes. That's the lowest available model on the 6 Plus. And there really is no comparison elsewhere either. There's a dual core 1.4 gigahertz processor versus a single 412 megahertz processor. There's 20 LTE bands versus just four GSM bands. There's NFC and Apple Pay versus none. There's 1080p video recording at 60 frames per second versus no video recording whatsoever. There's a 1.2 megapixel 720p front facing camera versus no front facing camera at all. So the iPhone 6 Plus has a lot of things that the original iPhone didn't. When you compare them side by side, the jump is huge. And sometimes we don't really realize that every time a new iPhone comes out, we think, oh, they've improved it very slightly. But when you compare the first against the most recent one, then you see that actually all those incremental updates have actually led to a much better, much faster, bigger performing smartphone. And although there's no denying that there are similarities as you'd expect because it's an Apple product and it's an iPhone, the differences are quite massive. And to leave you with a question like I often like to do, which of the previous iPhones do you think was the biggest leap? 